Good evening and welcome to the inaugural episode slash pilot episode of our podcast. Um, to be named later or yeah, named we now. Don't, we don't really know sure. yet. Kind of winging it. Um, which is evident by our podcast setup right now. Uh, we're currently broadcasting live from two TV trays in my home theater. It's a nice home theater. <laughs> um, yes, we are thinking of a name. I was thinking more along the lines of something built on our last name. Kind of like... Uh, Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith of Men in Black. And that's what I was thinking, because our last names are Smith and Jones, so that's something to do with that, maybe. I don't know. It would, it would really give us a good excuse to wear black suits and black ties and Ray-Ban sunglasses and take a picture. That's really the best part of that idea. I agree, especially in the summer heat. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to do that. Yeah, because absolutely, that's what you want to do, is put on polyester when it's 96 degrees outside. And have, like, two two extra layers mm-hmm. underneath. Yeah, you know, sweat on your suit. Like the analytical marketing side of my brain was trying to think of like some silly acronym, and the only thing I could think of would be um, the Pictures in Motion podcast or Pimp, Pimp <laughs> for short. Pimp. Yeah. Pimp, Pimp yeah. ain't easy, but uh, that, that's really the only thing I could think of. Um, other than that, yeah. If somebody else has got a better idea, yeah. If you have a better idea for the name of our podcast, please tell us yeah. because. Uh, we're trying to figure it out. This is definitely mm-hmm. something I've never tried before. Doug's done it before. Mm-hmm. so Yeah, I guess we should actually uh, probably introduce ourselves. Sure. So. I'm Doug. This is this is Doug Smith, and I'm Nathan Jones, mm-hmm. and uh, this is us. Yep. We're in the middle of somewhere, but we're not going <laughs> to Undisclosed, Undisclosed location. Undisclosed locations. A.K.A. Hydra Headquarters. Hydra Headquarters. Oh, well, he's actually Captain America. He doesn't ever like joking. I mean, look, it's right behind me. Uh, you know, he doesn't like joking about Hydra. I do. That's how I say hi to people. So, so what 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 are we aiming for with this podcast? What what kind of subjects are we going to tackle? I think we should just really just kind of get an introduction of what we want to talk about. Maybe mm-hmm. um, just kind of talk about some recent movie news, mm-hmm. uh, Comic Con, a little bit, some some trailers that came out, okay. just some just random. Uh, things that are around. Yeah, sounds good. I did. Uh, I did get. I was able to check off one of my bucket list items and go to San Diego Comic Con last week. It was overwhelmingly ridiculous. It was the best time of my life and the worst time of my life simultaneously. How, how was it the worst time? I want to hear that first. The, the worst time is that it really is not named correctly. It's it's no longer a comic it's convention. It is a comics. pop culture society gone awry. <laughs> Um, marketing, uh, I don't, I don't know, just shindig. It is um, line con more than line anything. Con, yeah, like yeah. stand in line con. Um, Did you get a fast pass or anything? No, those don't exist. They don't exist, exist in Comic Con. Yeah, unless uh, you're like super famous, that's the only way you're walking through that crowd yeah. and or not waiting in a line. Other than that, you're sitting in line with everybody else. Um, you're waiting in lines to get into other lines, like. Uh, <laughs> Why one do they of they call my call it Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of my things was I went and uh, tried to get my Goosebumps books autographed by R.L. Stein. He was there. So I waited an hour to get into the building because we the doors open at 9 a.m. Yeah. So we got there at 8 because we're like, okay, we got to get there a little early. There's a lot of people. Well, when it's 165,000 people, there's really no sense of getting there early. You're screwed no matter what time you showed up. So by the time we got in the doors, it was like 9.45 because we'd waited in the line so long. And then after that, we had to walk all over the place to look for where we needed to go yeah. to get in line for the autograph. And once we figured that out, it was waiting in another ridiculously long <laughs> line. And then that one lasted another hour. So Holy at this shit. point, it's ten twenty ish something like that. You've been morning. there for two. And yeah, a half essentially hours. essentially two and a half hours. Yeah. You really haven't done anything. It's just stand in line. Um, once I got that, um, you walk into this big open area where everything kind of diverges itself and there's different autograph lines for different celebrities and whatever. So I found the R.L. Stein line and I got in that one. Luckily this one's short at this time. There's only maybe 20 people in it. Now um, was there any theme music playing? Dun, 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 there dun. was, but there's literally so many people you can't hear a damn thing. Oh, that's I mean, you can. it's like elevator music. You yeah. slightly hear it, okay. but it's, so. it's not enough where you're like, oh man, that's the Doctor Who theme song or something like that. Yeah. So after... Finding that line, um, waited in it, and what you do is it's a ticket draw system where you reach in a fishbowl, oh, okay, and you pull out a ticket, and if the ticket has a like stamp on it, you're a winner. If it doesn't, you put it back. You can go back in the line and try again. What? Yeah. So all that time, you can literally be what? shit out of luck. 
holy crap, just like two hours and you can't, and you're like, hey, too too bad, the mm-hmm. odds are against you. And the more popular the yeah. celebrity and things like that, the longer their lines were. So there's people that had our same experience, yeah. but their line wait on the third line, so to speak, was greater, and they were waiting several hours, and they still yeah. came up short. So you're telling me that there are more famous people than R.L. Stein. Unfortunately... Well, that's true in our society. I, I don't know. I I just I just recall uh, the werewolf of Fever Swamp. Just that's the thing that I always remember, and I always remember him having a wolf claw at the very beginning of the, the thing. He's reading, mm-hmm. reading it, and uh, he he came up and he's just like, it's like, ooh, sorry, he caught me in the bad timing on the full moon or something ridiculous like that. I I picture he'd be the best part of Comic Con. Yeah, um, sadly he was just tucked away in a little little table in a corner. Um, but uh, after. Six tries in that line. I Jeez. was able to get the winning ticket. Holy um, crap. Actually, my wife was. I went four times, didn't get shit. Holy crap. Um, she went twice, and on the second time, she got it and gave it to me. So that worked out all right. But um, R.L. Stein, I, I want to say this for the record, kind of the originator of the twist ending. Oh, okay, before M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. He, you hear he, that? R.L. Stein is the originator. Mm-hmm. He started it first, huh? Because I'm sure there was other writers that did it prior, but oh, R.L. Stein... Most famous, so Most he gets famous. the credit. It's kind of the Nikolai Tesla, Thomas Alva Edison. <laughs> he, he is the Nikolai Tesla of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> twist endings. <laughs> that analogy alone is just too good. Yeah, but uh, it, it was a great experience. Um, lots and lots of movie studios there, and I can say without a doubt these people spend a shit ton of money on their promotions and their swag giveaways yeah. and just the overall marketing. They really spare no expense on these experiences and offsites and giveaways it, yeah if you can get into mm-hmm. it though right yeah. that's the thing that, yeah. yeah a lot a lot of line waiting but you know a lot of them are worth it um there was a, a westworld experience i still haven't seen the first season anyways i haven't seen westworld guys i'm sorry well never mind we will, will well i mean we will yeah, go down a different we'll go down a different path different path but um there was a lot of trailers released exclusively for san diego comic-con um one of them you might have saw was justice league i did see the justice league trailer any anything stick out that you thought was cool and or not cool? Uh, the Justice League trailer. Uh, well, here's the thing. DC... Still struggling. Still struggling. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman was great. Mm-hmm. I liked it a lot. Um, I liked how Patty Jenkins pretty much lightened the color palette of the entire... just Because, you know, obviously Man of Steel um, and... Suicide Do- Squad? Suicide Squad and Donna, like Donna Justice, Batman, mm-hmm. Superman... That all had a really dark color palette. Yeah, it's almost like they filmed it through welding goggles. Yeah, it's like a Facebook fucking filter. Like, <laughs> honestly, they just yeah. they filtered it on Instagram or something, and they... I, I don't know, it just feels super kind of CGI'd and, and kind of fake. And that's that's the kind of thing I'm worried about with, with Justice League, especially Cyborg. Mm-hmm. Cyborg looks so horrible to me. I, I still... Well, I'm still not a fan of this Flash costume. I don't know why he looks like a new Power Ranger and why his suit has to look mechanical-ish. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense why he would need body armor kind of thing. I mean, granted, I I guess maybe the spandex thing is not... It would stick out like a sore thumb compared to everybody else that's in body armor, but still, I really don't like that I think Batman set that trend. There's no more spandex. No. Everyone's got to be bulked up and... Bulked up. Hulk armor. Sad sad Batman. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got to be sad Batman. Yeah. Um... One thing that was going on recently with the Justice League movie is they're going under extensive reshoots. Um, <laughs> yeah. Recently, Zack Snyder stepped down because he had a family tragedy. Yeah. And uh, sorry, Zack. Yeah. Yeah. I it, mean, it, it, I'm, not, it, I'm not. I'm not too upset about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a jerk, but yeah. you know, it's like, hey, I, I like some of your films, mm-hmm. and I like like, but I like you know, 300 or Watchmen. Yep. Like those are like the vibe I get. And it, it does suck that something like this family tragedy would have to take him away from it. However, it's probably a net positive, yeah. in my opinion. So, so were you excited to hear about uh, his replacement? The person who will be filling in as his director? I kind of forgot who it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it Joss Whedon? Yes, it's Joss okay. Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought it was Joss yeah. Whedon. Uh, Mr. Marvel himself has jumped ship and went over to DC. Um, well, Age of Ultron, I mean, it wasn't as good as... It wasn't as good as it, I don't, I don't the think first heart, one. His heart wasn't in there anymore. No, and there may have been some extra studio interference. Some Kevin Feige kind of stuff going on. But to his credit, Kevin Feige, Ew, he's, yeah. he's got this shit figured out. For this sure. He's, he's got an excellent track record. But uh, Josh Whedon taking over... Um, Supposedly doing two months 
worth of reshoots and wow, spending twenty five million dollars on the second go round. Um, Jeez, that sounds like an extensive amount of reshoots. Like, there's been uh, movies in the past, like Rogue One, Suicide yeah. Squad, have all done reshoots. Yeah, I remember but none those. of them to the capacity of two months. Well, then this wasn't this like the has been slated as the most expensive movie ever made. Yes, I mean, or is that right at the moment, or is it Avengers? Am I, am I going? I think they're kind of neck and neck, neck at and this neck. point. Um, yeah. It, since it's not done, you know, they haven't even re- released what the marketing budget is. So at yeah. this point, it might be the most expensive movie ever made. You know, which <laughs> for what? Exactly. <laughs> which on paper it sounds great. Just to say, yes, you should spend the money and make this a grand spectacle. Yeah. Um, even after this Comic Con trailer, I'm still just like still wonky uh, on it. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like it, it didn't sell me. Uh, I didn't like the first trailer. I was hoping this second one was going to be kind of revitalized, have some different tone. It still had the same song from the first trailer, yeah. only like muted a little bit. Um, Do they still have the guitar solo that come that kicks in every single time? No, and then like Aquaman is still kind of. Why is he? He's doing coming that? off like more a, like a cowboy than a surfer. Like I, I'm not sure. You know, I like Jason Momoa. Yeah, I like him a lot. But I love Cal Drogo. He's got a lot of like, yeah, dude, yeah, brother. I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm gonna go Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan on this. <laughs> not understanding that decision. I I don't understand it either. I mean, I get it that they're trying to like have a non traditional kind of just like Gal Gadot was like super skinny. Mm-hmm. Obviously not white. She's Israeli. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman was. A lot older. Mm-hmm. He's gonna come a lot bulkier. Which I actually like that decision. What they were yeah. going with the whole rip off of the Dark Knight Returns type yeah. of thing. Robin's dead, even though they really don't like go into depth about how that happened or anything. They, they lay it out for you that he's dead. The Joker did something. Those know. are Frank Miller ones. Yeah, yeah. Go read those Frank Miller comics because they're good. Fantastic. But uh, in the midst of these reshoots, uh, there was a bit of a a panic on the internet. Uh-huh. Because some people noticed on set that uh, Henry Cavill, somebody had snapped some set pictures of the Justice League reshoot. So um, it's really not a spoiler to anybody that Superman would be back at this point. I think he, I know where this is going, but I don't. Yeah. But uh, in these set photos, they noticed that Henry Cavill had a nice mustache. <gasps> and people Superman freaked can't... the fuck out. <laughs> because Superman don't have no mustache. Superman doesn't have no mustache. Um, especially Henry Cavill. I mean, they were already a You're little... talking about... 1950s America, mm-hmm. 1940s. Sorry, is when 19. Well, the end of you know, the 30s is when mm-hmm. Superman was created, and so he's definitely like more of a 40s, 50s kind of. And I'm not going there just to that. I'm just talking about the clean shave look. Mm-hmm. Like he has a clean shave look. That's his. his he's look. survived all time periods all time. without a mustache. In the 90s, they threw a beard on him for a little while. Which, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, and he had a mullet, which sign of the time. Justly had an arm. Yeah, or, but at no yeah. point in time did he have a mustache. But it uh, turns out everyone's fears were kind of, you know... Oh, boy. In in error, because turns out he's also filming a movie called MI6 simultaneously, and his character in that movie has a mustache. So what they're going to do is they're going to CGI... Of course. ...out his mustache. <laughs> Did, what part of this movie doesn't look CGI to me? Well, that, that's the thing. I'm like, at, if you're going to the extent of spending money for some poor, probably... Ten Korean animators yeah. sitting in front of a you know a computer terminal, physically removing a man's mustache for frames at a time. I mean, you're already going down the wrong wrong path for these kind of things. I mean, I don't want to get into like a rant, but like, I honestly, I, I get this whole Hobbit vibe mm-hmm. with. I mean, you know how, I guess that uh, the whole thing with Lord of the Rings versus the Hobbit, the practical effects are just going away because it's like it's it's a lot more time consuming. It's a lot. It's a lot more expensive. Mm-hmm. You can make faster. You can make movies faster if you just CGI it. Yeah. You know, but I feel like that's that's kind of it's losing all that magic, haha, <laughs> magic because you know that it's you know obviously they're creating stuff just with the CGI stuff. But I don't know. Now the problem I think with that whole scenario is, don't you think it would be ten times easier just to have him shave his damn mustache and then for the MI six movie that he's yeah. filming. Put some prosthetic mustache. I mean, like, hair and makeup <laughs> has done wonderful things in the last hundred years. They have great costuming and makeup and wardrobe departments. They're going to have a Groucho Marx glasses yeah. for him. Surely they can give him a mustache that looks semi-realistic for this movie for a couple of weeks until his, his grows back. Doug, they can't, and don't call him Shirley. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. I digress. That seems, yeah, it seems like such, an, such a much easier option. Just like, hey, 
How about you just shave and we could put on a fake mustache? The thing I was going to talk about was the fact that the Infinity War, the other side of the thing, we have DC yeah. and then we got Marvel. Marvel. The Infinity War trailer dropped. Um, you can't watch it online right now. It, it was the only one. Known. Yeah. It was the only one that wasn't released to the public afterwards. Um, I've seen it. You haven't. Yeah. I'll give you some highlights, things that I saw. Um, spoilers, everyone. Yeah. Spoilers for a trailer for a movie. If you want to listen to this. It hasn't come out yet. So. <laughs> but uh, one thing. Um, so you saw the Spider-Man movie, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. So in the Spider-Man movie, at no point in time did they ever establish any Spidey sense? No. They didn't. Nothing that I saw or noticed and that I read about anything that could be construed as his Spidey sense. Which is, yeah, and Kevin even said something like, oh, no, it's there, but he, yeah, yeah. he like, kind of dodged the... Yeah. Nothing yeah. visually is yeah. there to represent it. So, well, we get it in this trailer. Um, they show Peter Parker on the school bus. Yeah. And um, a planetary object or spaceship is yeah. coming into the atmosphere. And as it's coming, it shows a close-up on his arm hair, and it's raising up. And oh. I'm like, oh, here we go, Here's finally. we got the Spidey sense, so... That was cool to see them finally, you know, throw that in the mix. Um, there's a bunch of destruction, obviously. You know, yeah. Thanos, this is going to be an epic, world-devouring, ending, apocalyptic-type scenario. Where's his generals there? Does he have generals? They do. Okay. Yeah, he's, got a, nice. he's got a small army with him. There's one thing that's very visually a, a jarring. Jarring, yeah. Yeah, when you... Look at Thanos because we've seen him in what was it Guardians Galaxy? We've seen him in most or, no yeah. Avengers. Avengers for a little bit. For a little bit, yeah. That well, in Avengers, he's on like the, yeah. the the chair and he's got his full on armor and everything. Well, this one, he doesn't have a helmet on, so he's just bald. Bald, yeah. Bald. He's got just like a tunic on and some pants. So I mean, he's he's casual Thanos. I mean, it's casual Friday and it's casual Friday. But um, so that was a little surprising to see him in that kind Without of context. The, helmet but there's a lot of destruction scenes um there's a new hulk buster armor type thing i guess this is to go against iron man yeah which would make sense because it makes sense um you get to see little snippets of everybody Uh, another thing you'd greatly appreciate um we see captain america with a full-on beard i do like captain america with a full-on beard see Uh, that's someone who can pull it off i don't know about henry cavill with the mustache beards are cool mustaches are not (laughs) um black widow has blonde hair I've heard about that one. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if she's went into hiding kind of with Steve, if that's the reason for the blonde hair, or she just, you know, spent she $6. She has all the wigs. Yeah, you know. she spent $6 and got a dye job. You know, who knows? Um, other than that, there was um, an ending to the trailer that was ridiculous. So Thanos finally puts on the gauntlet. Yeah, yeah, of course. And he activates it. And in doing so, it's kind of hard to tell just because the leak footage is kind of rough, but... He destroys a celestial object, whether it's like a comet. Um, it, to me, it literally looks like a moon. Not our okay. moon, per se, but a moon. Yeah. Um, he kind of crushes it. Not in his hand, but kind of using um, Nintendo using, Power yeah. Glove style. Yeah, Nintendo Power Glove. Yeah. If you remember the Nintendo Power Glove. Yeah. You, so you he crushes this, uh, this moon. <laughs> wow. And he freaking throws it. I mean, that that's about as... Yeah. Epic. Epic as it gets to yeah. throw a freaking moon at somebody as a weapon. <laughs> so um, this is definitely going to push the boundaries as far as you know threat level that Marvel and any of these superheroes have faced. I mean, heck, I mean, it's going to, like we were saying a little earlier with Justice League, it's going to be hella expensive just to pay for all these people. Mm-hmm. And so you, you literally saw everyone that has been uh, yep. in the Marvel Universe so far. Everybody. They've got Everybody. Um, Doctor Strange. Hey, my, that's my guy, Doctor yeah. Strange. Throwing out uh, mental projections and Star Lords like jumping on them like lily pads and firing gun. I mean, everyone's got their action moment. Yeah. Um, they show scenes of like Peter Parker got his ass kicked and he's on the ground apologizing to Tony. It looks like he's almost dying. Um, he's wearing the new spider suit that they you know teased at the end of yeah. Spider-Man: Homecoming. So obviously he does get that Those upgrade. New suits coming. But uh, it was a, it was a great trailer. Um, hopefully they officially release it so we, I can dissect it a little more. Well, myself and the public who's probably watching this and also listening mm-hmm. probably has not seen it. Well, go on YouTube and search that show. Try finding it on uh, uh, YouTube if you can. There's a lot of really crappy fan footage there. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I've been trying to look. But, yeah, they just keep taking it out. I'm surprised they, pull it, they put it out because, they, like you said, every other trailer has been put out mm-hmm. except for that one. Yeah, that, that was the only one that never got officially released. So that was kind of disappointing. Um Movie-wise, there was a, a special screening at Comic-Con for a Netflix original movie, Yeah, um, Death Note. 
Oh wow! Okay, are now, you familiar with that? I I have watched the anime. I know uh-huh. all about it, but I, there's a lot of controversy it being an American mm-hmm. kind of take on this. So I saw I didn't get to see the screening because yeah. apparently it was a, a long line to wait for it, and they didn't actually tell you it was for Death Note. It just said Netflix surprise screening. Gotcha. And I didn't really want to gamble, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of time in line for something I didn't know what it was. Well, it turns out it was Death Note. I heard great things from the people walking around that really? actually did see it. Um, they did release a, a five minute trailer, which I was kind of um, kind of like an actual scene and not so much a trailer. But um, I watched that five minute thing and it's really well done. Um, the death god doesn't look yeah. silly. Ryu is his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not. I wasn't. I mean, I knew yeah. it was an anime. He's the biggest anime guy here. Yeah, that's, that's not true. <laughs> I knew it was an I anime thing, bit. but I hadn't. Uh, other than that, I didn't know what it was yeah. about. So um, well, apparently, but, it's about a kid that gets a, a book. Yeah, a book that he can. He, he writes down the name if he can picture their face, mm-hmm. and he knows he writes the exact name down. Then within five minutes, they die of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And so, but yeah. In this one, he was writing down like a bully's name, and then he also wrote down how the bully would die. Yeah, yeah. If you don't, if you don't disclose what you say, it's a heart attack. But if you say exactly what's going to happen, mm-hmm. then yeah. Yeah. Well, the one they sh- they show in the trailer is he writes down the bully's name, and then he puts decapitation. So I was like, okay, okay we're obviously yeah. not pulling punches. So I'm not sure what the rating on this thing is, and, probably or if he even mature, has to have a, a rating sure. because it's on Netflix. Yeah. So it's not really, you know under that same constraints as motion picture association yeah. or tv ratings so yeah i can i mean i obviously when i sign up for netflix it's i mean i'm obviously old enough so i can just click on it they just do some kind of warnings like mm-hmm. when i watched 13 reasons why they always just put a warning there like hey this is really serious stuff so watch it yeah uh, another trailer that i saw exclusively for comic-con was a uh, ready player one I have heard good things. I still haven't seen the trailer. Yeah, well... Well, Steven Spielberg is back mm-hmm. um, after, what, two bad kitty movies he made? Yeah, what, B- BFG? Well, B- BFG, it, fe- it kind of failed. And There was something else that he did, right? That was just like... Did he do Sully? Who did... And that I, was Eastwood. Yeah, that I was Clint Eastwood who did Eastwood that. did Sully, and that one kind of flopped as well. I just... Uh, but uh, Ready, Ready Player One, you know, a novel. Yeah. A very popular pop culture, you know... Mm-hmm novel um if anyone hopefully can do it right it would be spielberg he's got great experience he's got that jaws experience got that jurassic park yeah. experience he knows how to et yeah he knows how to make a good movie um he's he's got much if you're going to argue the merit of steven spielberg's you know filmography then fuck you right? he's, one of the, right he's, he's one of the worst directors ever yeah yeah, yeah. don't so, fuck with steven spielberg excited to see that um it cgi heavy again uh, i really kind of thought with him at the helm that maybe it would be a little more practical effect-ish but given yeah. the content of it being kind of a, a vr immersive experience i understand that is was there anything about it like this is making me think of like avatar mm-hmm. has did james Cameron have anything with uh, avatar 2 or however many other yeah avatars no I, I didn't see any kind of like tagline that he was an executive producer or any kind of producer um i'm sure maybe given the technology that Cameron kind of developed for Avatar. For sure, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that he has exclusivity rights to it, but I'm sure mm-hmm. that once that came out, everyone kind of took notes and said, okay, here's where we can use this kind of technology for our future projects for ourselves. I kind of just, uh, I mean, just kind of, just, we've kind of you know, went around this a little bit, but like, I, I think this, this topic of just like overusing CGI mm-hmm. is something that's really getting to me. Um, and also just also the unorigin like I guess unoriginality is that how do I say it yeah like just um, like I'm just seeing so much reboots so many so many new movies we'll, we'll talk about the it trailer in a second because mm-hmm. I actually watched that and I liked yeah. it um, but seriously I'm just like I keep seeing these remakes and these reboots and I just think that I'm like where's the where's the original sources at and th- honestly the, the things I see best the, the independent movies mm-hmm. are. I mean, they're they're really really great. The ones that I've been you know trying to attempt to see. Big Sick was a really good take on if you haven't seen it yet, um, on the romantic comedy. It's definitely a little uh, comedic uh, vibe to that because he was a comedian and he is an actual comedian. This was actually a true story with him. But I don't know. I just I I kind of worry about the future of at least big blockbuster kind of movies because like yeah we get stuff like Valerian but which came out recently but I've heard really bad things about it and I just I don't like that guy. And I don't like that girl that much. Yeah, um, I like the guy as an actor. I mean, I think he's got talent. He does the same thing every he, movie he That does. is yeah. the thing I'm picking up on now. It's like what I assign as talent, I'm realizing it's kind of a 
a shtick, narrow shtick. Yeah, a shtick, a very yeah. narrow Boy field. Bay. <laughs> but um, one thing I think the main reason for the the reboots and you know the recycling of old adages and things like that is movie studios are very hesitant to green light a, green light yeah. something that's not established. Like it's almost a no brainer for them to sign a large check for millions, and millions of dollars for a project that already has an established fan base. People already have some sort of knowledge for it. You don't have to market it as well. You don't have to push, you know, the promo dollars as much as you would for any other thing. Advertising can be very minimal because, yeah. like I said, it's already established. Exactly. It's, already, it's already well known. So, like Blade Runner 2049. Mm-hmm. However, most people my age don't even know what Blade Runner is. Yeah. Um, Still considered a, a cult classic and not like uh, yeah. a, a financial success. Yeah, and... Um, Actually, I've only I only just saw Blade Runner. I've seen two of the versions. There's like five versions yep. of that movie, um, and I I saw it uh, the like maybe I want to say seven or eight months ago mm-hmm. for the first time, and I saw the original theatrical cut, and then I also saw the director's cut. I haven't seen the international cut, mm-hmm. and the final cut, and all that stuff. No, I seen the final. I didn't see the director's cut. Yeah. The, the fact that two. you saw the, the two most important in my the two, eyes, yeah. the directorial and then the theatrical, because those are you know the most sought after ones would be the directorial. Yeah, because you always want to see what the director's true vision was yeah, before the studio exactly. and everybody else got involved. But the thing with that movie is, again, like I said, it's more of a cult following movie. Like it did, it did all right in the box office yeah. originally. It's one of those movies that it's a thank piece too. It's, it's, exactly, it's, it takes multiple viewings to really pick up on certain things and, and you know really understand it. I I kind of just missed that Ridley Scott though, mm-hmm. like of that time period. Like he just did Alien. And like and then like Blade Runner, I'm like yeah. those are like two of like the I mean just two it, of the greatest movies in my opinion. Yeah, it's almost like he just like went to the end of his career and said, you know what, I'm gonna start back from what made me. Yeah, and then do it all again, which yeah, is like, great. Yeah, I liked The Martian a lot. Mm-hmm. I liked uh, Prometheus. Yeah, I did too. I'll be at the the scientists are really stupid. Yeah, and uh, aren't really scientists. Um, but I want to say like uh, I actually liked Alien Covenant. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, although yeah, he's I think he's dumbing it down a little bit. I think he got too much flack for Prometheus not providing answers and then being alien, yeah, yeah, it's just like, being the exact replica of the alien movie. And because everyone went to that movie expecting, okay, we're we're yeah. going to get the xenomorphs, we're going to get all these answers of how things happen in Alien. Instead, we got Alien remixed yeah. with no answers and a retarded sloth-like xenomorph <laughs> mutant thing. <laughs> and heart and more questions. Yeah, exactly. And the director's cut, which of that movie has a lot of deleted scenes, mm-hmm. answers a lot of things uh, that I liked about it. At least mm-hmm. had some extra stuff with it. I'm like, why don't you just release that? Yeah, and that's that's frustrating when I, I see things like that because I'm like, okay, this would have made so much more sense, and it only maybe added five minutes to the runtime. And when you're talking about a two hour movie, five minutes really doesn't no. make or break it. No, in my eyes, anyways. If you committed to watching a two hour movie, you should be okay with watching a two-hour and five-minute movie. Yeah. But I think a lot of times it's just studio interference. They say, hey, we want to, you know, we want to shoot for this time frame. Yeah. And things like the extra answers we got in the Blu-ray that, you know, kind of answered some of those philosophical questions that the movie proposes are super necessary, but in the studio eyes, they just throw it to the wayside. All right, I'm looking at some of the the comments here mm-hmm. on mine, at least. Um, pretty much, uh, they can hear me perfectly. Uh, uh, did you dress up? No, we didn't dress up. We will possibly dress up. Like you've got a Black. Doctor Strange shirt on. I got a Doctor Strange shirt. That's a movie. I'm actually in the Marvel studio here <laughs> with uh, Doug here because he's got almost everything Marvel related. Dun, dun, be, dun. You know, it's it's pretty cool, pr- really cool location. Uh, but maybe if it's not summer. You might dress up. Yeah. Men in black suits? Men in black suits. We might do that Mr. Jones and Mr. Mm-hmm. Smith thing. Um, Grant, one of our old uh, friends, ah. has said uh, Big Sick is one of the best romantic movies in a while, and I would have to agree. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? I mean, I, I know you haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I heard great things. Um, I like seeing the, the smaller movies succeed. With, I mean, I don't expect any of them to make $100 million, but... The majority of those kind of movies have like a ten, twenty million dollar financial budget. And yeah. Anytime I see them make forty, I'm super excited. I'm like, that's great. That means they've doubled their budget. Um, the writers are going to get their money's worth. Studios are going to get their money's worth, and more movies like that are likely to be films. Yeah. I, I, I like I, I'm liking the art house films a lot mm-hmm. more, and I'm not. I like maybe uh, originality in my horror. 
And this is definitely one of those movies that like is so divisive. Yes. Um, I'm not a horror guy. Everyone yeah. knows that. <laughs> yeah. But you guys know it now. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. None of us are really horror guys. Secrets Sorry. revealed. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to lose our horror yeah. fans here. The thing, my issue with horror is a lot of it's very follows a very strict formula. Sure. I mean, it's it's torture porn in one category. <laughs> yep. The other one is just your stupid, you know, dumb college age people that make the same mistakes oh, and no. get killed I'm by go some. In this house. It's, it's abandoned. Know, very archetypal type style character sure. that's really not fleshed out it's just like oh they're killed because they're crazy and it's like, yeah. oh what more do you need yeah it's just it, I, it, it might be like feeding that like mm-hmm. just tribalistic kind of like we want to see other people die in a way like yeah. kind of that gladiatorial kind of like seeing people get cut to, to shreds or dying in creative ways is just cool yeah. and it's not my thing no yeah. and I saw they're making an eighth Saw movie an eighth Saw <sighs> what's it called Jigsaw uh, yeah I mean, no, they're making an eighth Eighth one, huh? Mm-hmm. And supposedly the rumor is that Jigsaw, what was it like Tobin Bell? Was that the character's name? I never saw. The, I, I saw. <laughs> I saw the first two. I yeah, think. I saw the first two because <laughs> I I had people like, no, it's not your your typical horror movie. This one's kind of yeah. smart. It's a think piece, and I was like, oh, I don't right. know, think piece. Yeah, well, it it had some merit. I'll give sure, you that. Sure. It wasn't just stupid torture porn like I, I anticipated. Like hostile or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. That Eli Roth fuck. Yeah, Eli Roth, not eh. mm-hmm. cool. If people like Eli Roth, that's fine. Not but us. supposedly the rumor is that like uh, the Jigsaw guy himself is going to return somehow in this movie, and I'm like, really? I, well, you're eight the, movies deep, and you're gonna bring somebody <laughs> back from the dead. I mean, this, you're literally rehashing Jason, Freddy, many, Chucky, like all these movies from the '90s that yeah. made too many sequels and well, brought characters back from the dead and killed them back for the dead, and they just keep they keep making more like Jason 2000 or mm-hmm. like. <laughs> Like you said, like we haven't seen any of the the, the Saw movies past two, mm-hmm. so like how there's a we, good reason. There's, for a, it. there's a good reason we've stopped. Um, I don't want to go into Fast and Furious territory because mm-hmm. I know you've seen them. I have. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not a fan of those at all. But uh, Doug, you want to? Do you like Car Wars? Do you like Car Wars? I mean, that's essentially where they're going at this point. I'm waiting for the the hijack the fucking space shuttle and take this shit to the International Space Station. What's it? Car Wars Nine coming out? Yeah, I mean, as long as it makes money, obviously they're gonna. Sure. They're going to keep making ones. Um, for a while, the movie quality actually went up. Like, yeah. It's like, kind of when I've, the rock I've joined. heard, like, was it Fast Five? Was, or yeah. Or was it the high, like just pretty much heist movie? Mm-hmm. Like point Break kind yeah. of? I've heard. It was, it was kind of an Americanized Italian job. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So I, I was okay with that. There was a lot of cool fight sequences, action sequences with the cars and everything. But now it's just, it, it doesn't make any sense anymore and now it's just almost a Michael Bay movie where it's just like let's blow shit up and wreck cars for the sake of it and... <laughs> well I, I just remember seeing the last trailer for the 8 and like this time Don's bad <laughs> and he <laughs> this time Don's bad and he doesn't care about his family which is all you know all the the Paul Walkers mm-hmm. I had to make that joke but like uh, you know um, who else is in there The Rock uh, what's her name you know I know her name Wonder Woman? No, 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 no. Oh, Charlize uh, Theron? Or? Not Charlize Theron, the, who's always there. The kind of like bisexual lady. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of the actress's name. Yeah, she's in Oh, the, uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, Michelle Rodriguez. They're all there, and uh, like, it's like, how dare you? Dom just like just portrays like he's like I found like I found I can't even talk like <laughs> I can't even do. A you Vin should be Diesel. proud that you can't do a Vin Diesel uh, impression. Then, uh, hey, I'm Groot. I don't know. <laughs> That's where I'm that was that. actually way better than it should have been. Uh, Joe, Seth Rogen just talked about Hostel. Do you have a review for that? I do not have a review for that because I do not want to watch that movie, Aaron. Sorry. Hostel. Hostel. Yeah. Oh, review is um, it's bad. It, it's a if you like. Rob Zombie House of a Thousand Corpses slash Grindhouse Films. Yeah. Then Cannibal it's Holocaust, just, if you want to get really, you know, yeah, it's, deep. It's just blood splatters and close ups of like limb disembowelments for and the sake of boobs. Yeah. Gratuitous nudity, which I'm okay with most yeah, times. Yeah. yeah it's but same. like, but if it's really, it, like I said, it, it's torture gross. porn. There's yeah. like breasts being cut off and teeth like that. I'm like, like mm. that's, that's really nice. Yeah. That's not how I really wanted to spend my entertainment time um positive horror movie yeah. um I, I think we're both excited about it is it the remake oh yeah mm-hmm. uh, you've seen the trailer i've seen the trailer um the new one yeah the, the comic-con I've seen one the, yeah um, i've seen that one 
I did I didn't catch it watching it, but I did see it online where there is a small little snippet of the original Pennywise in the background. Really? Of one of the scenes. Again, I it happened too fast for me to pick up on it, but see, I haven't seen it like the original movie mm-hmm. in quite some time. I actually, I mean, obviously it came out what nineteen ninety? Yeah, like literally. Probably. I don't remember the exact year, but I remember I was a young child, Yeah, and it scared the bejesus out of me. I don't have a clown fear. Douglas is an old man. Yeah, but it still scared the crap out of me, because it's a very creepy movie. It was my parents. They've always told me, because we're not really horror people, Mm -hmm. like horror movie people, but my mom and dad always said, it's It and Pet Cemetery. Those are the scariest things they've seen. And I understand, because I remember seeing it over at my cousin's house. And it was like I didn't know it was a two part movie. Yeah, like it was a TV yeah, movie. Yeah, used to be the fat VHS yep. cassette. Yep. And uh, I just remember watching it, and I'm like, man, this is like freaky. Mm-hmm. And, like I don't know if like we've always had a fear of clowns, but I, I definitely want to say that this this last year that where we had that whole clown incident, yeah, thing that just went down and scared everyone on social media. No, like no matter who you are, yeah. like just random clowns showing up. Like I feel like it like pioneered that mm-hmm. kind of just like. Clowns are really creepy, and yeah. they're can, they can probably kill you. There was a, a lot of rumors and speculations going around that that whole thing that happened last summer with the clown showing up all over, you know, America, so yeah. to speak, and just kind of like creeping the fuck out of people, <laughs> doing things like that, was kind of like some viral marketing for it. Really? Which I would love to believe is true, but I, I, I don't think it is. I would want to believe, too. And by the way, I just started X-Files, so I, I want to believe that as yeah. well, but I... One, really... one, one thing I did see at Comic-Con that was going around that was kind of viral marketing that they had for the movie It was they had a lot of, not children, but very small adults, kind of like in the... Midgets? No. Not midgets? I'm talking like Tom Cruise's, like 5'2"-ish. Oh, two-ish. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. They look very undersized to a normal person. Hey, hey, Tom Cruise is, is just as tall as everybody <laughs> in all of his movies. Yeah. But uh, they had a lot of these small adults... Wearing uh, the yellow raincoats, yeah. having the red balloon on a string, and they were kind of like sporadically spread around the area and inside the convent- convention center and outside on the grounds. And all they did was stand there and look down at the ground. Fuck that. That would scare the yeah. shit out of me. I thought, okay, I'm like, maybe you say something to them and they'll interact with you, give you like a promo card or something for the movie. Nope. Did they even look at you? No. Like,. So like I, British are they like British guards kind of just there? Pretty much yeah. non moving. One of them, I saw a couple that were walk around the crowd, but they literally just stared at their shoes the whole time. Nothing you said or did to them would phase them whatsoever. Ugh. Yeah, I just I don't know. This I mean the the new, the new movie looks mm. good though. Yeah. And it, I honestly looked like I I got I got the opposite vibe. This is a different segue because this is what happens. We jump around all the time. <laughs> um I I think of Jared Leto being the Joker, some kind of ICP mm-hmm. kind of esque Joker, and that's what I was kind of worried about this with this uh, mm-hmm. this it trailer mm-hmm. a little bit. I was like, oh, they better not go that direction a the, little bit. The thing that, and this is just a personal pet peeve of mine, that perturbed me the most with the new it look, so to speak, the new costume, is that he's a fucking ginger. Yeah, I mean the old Pennywise had like bright fire engine red hair. Yeah, yeah. I remember this that. one is straight carrot top ginger. <laughs> you think it is carrot top? Yeah, it could be. I mean, his career has went down south. I haven't heard of him since, you know, like the Simpsons made fun of him. Yeah. So. But uh, he's got like the weird like line drawn makeup almost, yeah. the you know, the drama mask of old. So he's still got a lot of creepy, creepy factor to him. I definitely like the soundtrack of it so far. Yep. And, uh, okay. So I'm going to answer some of these questions that people are asking. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um... Uh, Grant said thoughts on DC you making a comeback with Wonder Woman we already answered that Grant we're going to have to yeah. so <laughs> Wonder Woman thumbs up thumbs up everything else is kind of like a sideways thumb because we're still nervous I would say Man of Steel is in the middle mm-hmm. like right I there I enjoyed that one I, I enjoyed it too Suicide Squad Batman vs Superman thumbs down <laughs> they're bad movies and I'm a super nerd so if yeah. I'm saying that it's generally yeah Doug's a, an expert on this and mm-hmm. I mean as you can see with the, the bat cave and everything I should be the easiest person to please with that thing I mean it's true. all you should have to do is put those characters on screen and I, I'd be happy <laughs> like, Ooh, look at I walked out of both of those movies saying what the fuck was that shit oh I just remember the what the fuck moment that I had especially with Suicide Squad I was with some friends mm-hmm. and we were watching it and like literally 10 minutes into the movie like how jumbled that the introductions are oh it was a and clusterfuck like, and how many fucking songs they had mm-hmm. like it like, was 
like one long trailer for the first 20 minutes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I just remember uh, me and my friends were like counting. Mm-hmm. Like as the credits were rolling at the end of that, we're like, what the hell was this? Like we were we were literally reading, like we're going to count how many songs they have. Mm-hmm. And I swear it was more than 30. I believe it. 40. Yeah. I'm like, that's insane. Um, I, di- I did see that today that Wonder Woman has surpassed all the movies thus far of 2017, so it's now the highest grossing film of the year. So that's good. DC obviously has some capabilities. I'm not going to say some. They have capabilities of making a fantastic movie. Um, the biggest thing is getting the fuck out of the way. I think Warner Brothers yeah. interferes too much. They've got a, a long history of doing that, and that's the difference between... DC and Marvel. Marvel gets to call their own shots right now because they own their own properties for the yep. most part. DC has a joint venture with Warner Brothers, so there's that constant power struggle between the two in making these films. And you can definitely tell that when you're watching this, saying, that shit really doesn't make sense. I don't understand why DC would do something as silly as that. Yeah. Um, and I also just, it makes me think of um, a little bit, do you remember that um, it was, uh, when Venom was announced with yes. Tom Hardy? Mm-hmm. How uh, the director, or like uh, with Sony, they were mm-hmm. talking about Sony, and there she, it's like she was with Kevin Feige, yeah, and he just like kind of freaking out. Yeah, they kept going bit. back and forth. She would say, "Oh yeah, it's part of the MCU he's universe," like, and he's like, "No, no, it's uh, not. Like, no, it's uh, like so." I'm not sure if they're trying to keep that a secret, and she blew the lid off that, yeah, or if it's something that literally hasn't been figured out on a contract yeah. yet. Um, to me, you have to at some point bring it into the universe. Um, it's just not the same. It doesn't have the same gravitas as a character. I think the casting was perfect with Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I just it's fear great. that they're going to make the same horrible mistakes they've made in the past by not jumping into the MCU and then trying to control the movie. I kind of just feel like he he's like, oh, um, we haven't talked about this yet. Mm-hmm. Also, like, it's like, what have I done with Spider-Man? Like, yeah, it was awesome. Homecoming's great. Go watch it. Definitely. I mean, the Civil War was great. So, I mean... I, I have a feeling it even if they do work together it'll it'll be great mm-hmm. so um justin said what's wrong with gingers well they don't have no souls so yeah for clearly, starters for starters um so uh let's see do you have an alternate means to view this besides facebook no we're gonna figure it out we'll yeah figure it out someday since we're just winging it today and this is kind of like our just first shot at everything we have a very ghetto setup right it's now very ghetto oh uh, <laughs> setup yeah um obviously we'll we'll think of better ways to get this out there um yeah whether it be visually or auditory but um yeah right now you're stuck with facebook live yeah well there is a couple of fan questions that i had come up Mm -hmm. um speaking of blade runner we were talking about a little bit earlier i had a friend earlier today ask me about uh the remake of dune and how Denis Villeneuve is he is the new director of this he's Mm -hmm. you know he's pioneering this you know blade runner 2049 which comes out later Mm -hmm. in uh, it's later. It's October. October or November ish. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that because I, I've seen everything he's made. Denis Villeneuve. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? I think I've seen all but one of his movies. Incendies. Is yeah. The one you haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good foreign film, by the way. If you haven't seen it, I'm super excited about that news mainly because number one, um, his work on Blade Runner right now is I know his biggest sticking point was he wanted to do all practical effects. Which is great. And like 95% of this movie, even though there's flying cars and shit like that, is all practical effects, no CGI. So for a movie like Dune, which aside from the sandworms, I haven't even seen. I don't even know. I I know of Dune, but I don't know anything about it. It's been tried numerous times. Um, There was a decent one in the 80s. Um, There was a TV miniseries on sci-fi that had Sting. Like for the wrestler? No, musician. Oh, Sting, Sting from the police. Yeah. Gotcha. G- Gordy yeah, himself. Um, and it um, and it was all right. Uh, it's it's a fantastic story, and I've been waiting for years for somebody to do it really well. My mom got me into that series a long time ago because she was huge into reading the the series. And when they made those that movie in the eighties and then the TV series, yeah. I mean, she was a huge fan of those. So I know all about the spice. I've I've heard good things about the book, and um. I definitely need to read it. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I really am happy that Denis Villeneuve is doing this because I've loved everything he's done. And speaking about what we were talking about earlier a little bit with creativity, almost every one of his you know, screenwriters, he writes a lot of his, his movies, he directs it and he writes it too, um, have been pretty original. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really cool because, I mean, and Cindy's has a, uh, an interesting M. Night Shyamalan slash, uh, what, do we, what do we call it? 
uh, R.L. Stein, uh, Stein, Stein twist. R.L. Stein twist. Um, but like, yeah, Prisoners is fantastic. Sicario was blew me out of the water. Arrival was good. He's going to be good things. Um, movie that everyone hates but you love. No, no, no. Sorry, Every, a movie everybody loves but you hate. I have an immediate answer for this. Okay, you go ahead. I'll have to think on. Mine is that. the Social Network. I <sighs> cannot stand that movie. I like David Fincher, uh-huh. um, and I like the like. I like the like just the tone of the movie. I just absolutely hate Jesse Eisenberg. Like I just I I only like him in Zombieland. That's literally the only movie I like him in. And, and most of the other things, uh, he's just he's just a weird guy, and I don't like him that much. Sorry, I'm staring off at my my collection. And, Here's uh, Doug's collection. Yeah, I'm trying to think because I I could answer that two ways. One I might have to think much harder on. Um, the first immediate thing is my guilty pleasure movies. Yeah, and they're not necessarily hated. Yeah, but they're they're not going to win any critic awards, and they didn't make a is whole. Van lot Helsing going to pop up? Soon? No, uh, it's tempting. Uh, I'm talking movie. about like the, the movies I grew up watching. Like, so there's a movie called Mac and Me. Oh yeah, I, I know have Mac you seen that? I, I've seen it. I've seen Mac. And yeah, Me. it's like a terrible ET ripoff, and it's also like half a commercial for McDonald's. Yeah. Um, coincidentally, um, <laughs> trivia wise, it's also the very first movie Jennifer Aniston was ever in, and she's like a Mac background dancing child at McDonald's when she was like seven. So she didn't get credited. Yeah. As an actress or anything like that, but it's the first movie she was ever in. Um, and then, like, uh, the Ernest movies. Oh, my God, Ernest. I fucking love those <laughs> movies. <laughs> I, I have, like, four... Every one that they've actually released on Blu-ray. You, he has he has the Ernest movies on Blu-ray. Yeah. I was and actually going to bring up, um, at my work, uh, we mess around with our, our computer screen, our desktop background, mm-hmm. and we found um, Criterion fake covers with, with Ernest movies. <laughs> <laughs> we, I want that. I, and I'm like, and we have, like, this super uh, juxtaposed uh, picture of Ernest Goes to Jail. It's just mm-hmm. a jail cell. It's like all white and then there's a Criterion in the corner. And you're just like, man, this is going to be a great movie. I'm like, it's Criterion Collection, so you get everything. Uh, Dan- Daniel says Harry and the Hendersons. Did people hate that one? I don't know if people yeah. I don't know if people hated that. I yeah. thought it was pretty fun. Uh, again, that, that's one of those movies that I grew up watching that I know didn't make a lot of movie and didn't win any critical acclaim, but it, I thought it was a good movie. Maybe that's just the ever loving 10 year old that never yeah. progresses in my head but. <laughs> do you actually have a movie though like that you're like wow why does everyone think this, this is so good not not off the top of my head like I said I know I have one I just have to like go through the collection because it, it would have to be one of those things where I'm like oh I own this and I know most people probably don't own this because I have Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat Annihilation I have them both as well I, I love, there we go that's, that, I mean that's a that's they're terrible movies, yeah. and every video game movie the, is really just terrible. The first one is actually fine, fine, and it actually made quite a bit of money because yeah. it was a spect- um, Street Fighter movie as well. Again, yeah, it, both of them. But they're yeah, like all video game adaptations, Resident yeah, Evil. All of his video game uh, adaptations are just like mostly shit. Mm-hmm. Like they just uh, they don't make like you know, what was the last one? Uh, Assassin's Creed. I've heard. Uh, I've heard it was just horrible. Yeah, I like, didn't want. I wanted to watch it just because of Michael Fassbender. Yeah. I've never played the games. I know basically what the storyline, yeah. you know, consists of, but I still haven't watched it. Yeah, Probably well, won't. Yeah, yeah there's, there's some movies soon, there. Anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of other things that I just I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, we can go ahead and wrap it up. You know, we, yeah. we've been talking for quite a while. We I have. Think it's uh, Jeez. a good. Uh, first run at it and like I said we'll figure a little bit more yeah. out and... oh, alright Facebook we are signing off mm-hmm. um, we're going to sign off on the podcast itself soon so thank you all for uh, tuning in we're all going to figure this out as best as we can for next time we'll have some kind of setup probably we'll figure it out as we'll have party on. hats on next time we'll have party hats on and we'll dress up just yep. like you guys 